In the previous video, we added another event listener to associate with our second button. But if you look at what ends up happening by looking at each of these action performed methods, both responses are doing very similar things. They're both just executing a print statement. It just so happens that they're printing different strings. So maybe we can just use one event listener object for both buttons. In the action performed method, we'll put an if statement that checks which button dispatched the action. If it was button one, then we print beep. If button two, then we print boop. This is where the action of an object comes in. You can think of this object as the representation of the event itself. From this object, we can access information such as the timestamp of when the event occurred, the source of the event, and other things. A new action of an object will get created automatically every time any one of our buttons get clicked. There is no need for us to explicitly make one. The user clicks on the button, an action event object gets created, which contains information about the event that just occurred. And that object automatically gets passed to the appropriate action performed method and gets stored in the parameter. We can use that action event object within the action perform method to get the information we need. For example, we can use it to know which object dispatched the event by using the getSource method. The getSource method returns to us a reference to the object that was the source of the event that just occurred. So we can use it to find if it was button one that was clicked or if it was button two. We can say AE, which is the name of our action event parameter, dot get source to access the get source method of the action event object. And then we can put this in an if statement. We can say if AE dot get source equals equals button one. In other words, if the button that was clicked was button one, then let's print out beep. Else, if AE dot get source is equal to button two, then let's print boop instead. If you want to store the source inside a variable, you can declare a variable of type object. For example, you can say object O is equal to AE.getSource. And then inside the if statements, you would just use O instead. And that's it. Now we just have one button listener that can be used for both buttons. So we can now delete button listener two. And then we register button two to button listener as well. So here we see that one event listener object can be registered to more than one event source. Okay, now let's test our program. Java C asterisk Java. Java GUI tester. And here is our GUI. Let's review the code first before we proceed with the test. 
we now have just one action listener object and both our buttons are registered to that one action listener object. And then inside the action performed method, we have some logic that makes use of the action of an object in order to figure out which button was clicked so that it can execute the correct print statement. Print beep for button one, print boop for button two. When the user clicks on button one, an action of an object gets created. There's no need for us to explicitly create this object. As you can see here in our code, nowhere are we actually instantiating an action event object. What we have here is just a parameter declaration. Instead, the Java program will be the one to automatically create an action event object when a button is clicked. There's nothing else that we need to do. This object will contain information about the event that just happened. One of the pieces of information that it will contain is the event source. And since it was button one that was clicked on, which led to the creation of this action of an object, then this action of an object will say that the source is button one. The action performed method is then called and the action of an object is passed to it and is assigned to the action event parameter, which we've named AE. So now, within the action performed method, we can access the action event object along with all of the information that it contains using the parameter name AE. Here, in this line, we are saying AE.getSource in order to access the information about the event source. In other words, it is like we are asking the action event object to tell us which button was clicked. And the action event object will tell us that it was button one that was clicked. So now a reference to button one is assigned to the object variable O. And we check if O is button one, which it currently is, then we print beep. When the user clicks on button two instead, then a similar thing happens. An action of an object is also created, but this time that action of an object will say that the source is button two. Okay, I'm going to go and click on button one now, and we see that it still prints beep. And if I click on button two, it will still print boop. Our program still behaves the same as before, but internally, it is now just using one event listener for both buttons.